All right, let's talk about Derek Carr and the New Orleans Saints offense. Listen, it was not a perfect day, and in many ways, I think that when you go into a game against Chicago, you're hoping to win by 100, right? Uh, That's just what you hope, but the NFL is not that simple. You've still got NFL caliber players on the other side, and I thought that you know, uh, Chicago was able to make some things happen, but so were the Saints in this game. And, you know, some of it was simple stuff, stuff like this, where what's going to happen is this is going to be a zone coverage play. And the way it works is you have a receiver who's lined up closer towards the middle of the field, running a route closer towards the middle of the field. Really, the goal is to try to isolate the uh, route on the top of the screen to give it a one-on-one matchup. And like, watch, one car takes a snap, you look over here, and that's what happened. You have the one-on-one matchup, the receiver car is looking towards, has yet to make his move, show what he's doing. This is Chris Olave, and it's actually a really, I think, well-ran route. Uh, You see the defender has no clue what's about to happen right now. He isn't shifting over towards the middle of the field at all. And again, the timing of it, I mean, you know, Carr is currently in the throwing motion. Olave has not yet turned his head. I mean, this is really well-timed because watch what happens. When Carr does get rid of the football, Olave makes the grab. They pick up a first down on third down and seven. They still had plenty of plays like this in this game, I thought, of just getting the offense going. And again, you know, part of the Saints, I'm sure what they were the most thrilled with in this game in many ways was just how bad Atlanta and Tampa Bay looked in this game. And I guess Carolina, but I think that's kind of, we we know where that season is going. But I think this is also a big takeaway, a positive from just the Saints themselves is getting these kind of possession plays going. Like this one's another one where again, Chris Olave, I mean, really uh, is kind of showing to be one of the better receivers just in the league in general. He's so good uh, in so many different ways. I feel like people kind of view him as just a deep threat, but he can do so many different things. Something like this, uh, it's going to essentially be a one-on-one matchup. Third down and goal, trying to get a touchdown here. Watch as one this play begins. There is a blitz, so there's pressure for Carr. As of right now, you don't really know if it's open, but Carr doesn't have time to sit around and wait. He kind of has to either trust his receiver or not trust his receiver and throw it you know, to the goalpost, right? Like that's kind of his two options on this play. He throws it to Olave, who does get open at the perfect time, makes the catch, and they're able to get a touchdown on that play to tie the game at 7-7 to early, you know, on in the game. Really good stuff there from Derek Carr. Really good stuff there from Chris Olave, especially. And it's that chemistry that those two guys are building. I mean, you know, this is their first year. And it is one of those things where, like, you do see it happen where these, you know, new quarterbacks go to a new team, sometimes take some time to get the chemistry down. Well, they're getting the chemistry down. They have the chemistry down, really. I mean, it's going well. But okay, let's go over here. Because, you know, listen, you might be sitting here saying, Jackson, I get it. They won the football game. You feel good about winning a football game. But this is Chicago, the team that everyone's winning by a million against. They're putting up tons of points. You only scored, you know, got 4.9 yards per play in this one. Derek Carr threw 34 times in just 211, uh, you know, yards in this one. What were the issues? Well, there were some. I mean, you know, a a few too many of these third down and 10 situations gets kind of tough where Chicago can play two safeties deep in man coverage underneath. Makes it really difficult to throw. Uh, For Derek Carr, it's a criticism of his that does get thrown out of, you know, looking at Jawan Johnson on this play. That's not the criticism, looking at Jawan Johnson, but the route that Jawan Johnson is running of being more of an underneath route. Like, watch as Carr takes the snap. You see that Johnson is underneath, and, and there's a bit of a, like, you can see why he's making this throw, right? And the reality is, he just feels like taking a chance here down the field, throwing in a double coverage is probably not the right move. The criticism is some people wish he would push the ball further down the field, but listen, this is his philosophy in these types of situations, and it has worked out relatively well for him over his career. Watch him flip the ball to Johnson, and Johnson, you know, there's another defender just off screen who made the play. That's the main reason why it wasn't able to work. Uh, If it was just that one defender, I do wonder if he picks up the first down, so it is what it is, but, you know, that's kind of the philosophy with Derek Carr. That's kind of how he views this, and also, you know, did give you an opportunity to go for a field goal, uh, you know, if you wanted. Like, there are benefits of getting five yards, 
But of course, if you're a Saints fan, you want to just get the first down on that play, right? And and there were some, there was some of that of Carr not taking a chance down the field, and maybe against Chicago, it is worth it to take a chance down the field. The flip side, though, is that you turn the ball over once or twice, you probably lose the football game. So uh, it you know it goes both ways. And speaking of chemistry, there still were some like yeah, not on the same page. And and again. You know, uh, I've made this comparison before. You think about Tom Brady with the Buccaneers, right? Uh, it took him, what, you know, two, th- really, th- like three quarters of the way into the season to finally get the chemistry down with those guys. Like, it can take some time. This one is a third down and nine. It's going to be Michael Thomas's route, sort of a one on one matchup on the outside. It's, it's zone coverage, but essentially, what's going to be a one on one matchup. Watch as Carr takes the snap. He's going to look down the field. And right here, I, I do wonder if Thomas was supposed to run a little bit deeper on this play. I don't, I don't know exactly what's happening. However, Carr's throw is as if though he was expecting Thomas to run shorter on that play, which I don't know exactly why you would do that. Why you, you'd run a route, you know, uh, sort of just a seven yard route on a third down and nine. I feel, you know, it's a one on one matchup either way. Might as well try to get the first down or at least get a yard short of it to where you can hopefully turn and fall for the first down. Uh, that feels more of a communication thing than just a misthrow. Again, I always assume miscommunication. Every now and then there is just a misthrow, but this feels communication to me. Just another thing to have to get down. And again, if you're a Saints fan, that's not the worst thing in the world, right? If there's still things you have to fix, that's not the worst thing in the world because these are things you can improve upon as the season goes along. Going over here, this is going to be a first down and goal situation. And this is just what the Saints want to do when things are working perfectly. Just confuse opposing defenses. They actually have a defensive tackle in the game who's going to be running just a route towards the flat, uh, helping sell up play action. Taysom Hill is in the game. So Derek Carr's, you know, uh, he's not even on the field on this play, in fact. And watch how Taysom Hill, he's going to do this. And I love this. They're, they're throwing the football, right? I mean, he looks down the field. Uh, the Bears end up having two defenders on a defensive tackle and nobody on the player I've circled in black. That's usually not ideal. But again, it's set up due to the hard play action because it's like it's Taysom Hill on the field. He's, you know, not really going to throw it, right? I, I really do like when the Saints do this. And they've really found something really effective with Taysom Hill. As you see, Hill is going to be able to make this throw, and they get a touchdown on that play. So credit to Taysom Hill. Uh, comes in, throws one pass, and it's a touchdown. So great stuff there by Taysom Hill. Obviously, though, it's due to the threat of his rushing ability, and this is a key way to get the offense going enough as well. So listen, at the end of the day, I know the numbers are the numbers, and there were some mistakes. This is still a step in the right direction for the Saints. And as painful as that Jacksonville loss was a few weeks ago for them, I really do feel like that was kind of the turning point. Uh, after, I mean, they had they beat the Patriots 34 0. That was kind of a weird game. But, you know, they had lost to the Texans and didn't look great in that game, only scored 13. Uh, but the way they were able to come back in that Jacksonville game, they were a drop pass away from potentially tying it. They then looked great against the Colts, another good offensive performance against the Bears, and an interesting game coming up against the Vikings. The Vikings are currently in a playoff spot right now at 5-4. and four. They have the same record, although obviously no Kirk Cousins for Minnesota, but that should still be an interesting game with a lot on the line for those two football teams, uh, and I do think that it's an opportunity for the Saints to keep rolling, and if they can you know, win that game, they have to feel good. I mean, again, like I said, one of the best things for the week, if you're a Saints fan, is just how bad the rest of the division, rest of the division looks. But yeah, big win by their standards. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.